Hello everybody, this is Reviews and More, back with a quick household item review. This is the Honeywell Portable Air Conditioner. This is a 8,000 BTU unit. It is rated to be able to cool up to a 400 square foot room in optimum kind of conditions. So before we get really started with the review, as always, please hit the like and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel and keeps me making these videos as I, you know, buy stuff from my house. In this case, this was a house product that we really needed. Um, we, we live in the south where it gets kind of cold, kind of sorry, not kind of cold, kind of warm in the summer and we have a big old front room over the garage next to, the, to an uninsulated um, garage, which means it gets hot there. So we get those 95, 100 degree days and the AC unit just can't keep up. So we end up running the entire, we end up running functionally two AC units for the whole house upstairs and downstairs when really we might be only occupying one room. So this is kind of meant to kind of deal with that issue. So it's a good solution. It's portable. It's not, it's window mounted, but not, um, I'm sorry, it's window attached, but not window, window mounted. It's self evaporating. So you don't have to worry about losing, uh, having to empty a drip pan over and over and over again, unless you live in a very, very humid environment, which during the summer might be the case for us, but usually it was not too bad. Um, so we don't think we'll have that issue. It comes with a remote, as you can see here, and there's the little window mount unit right there. Um, it'll come attached to a full length window mount, so like it'll basically be the full length times two. Um, if you have a standard size window, you'll probably take this out and put in the standard size attachment, which is basically that little slitted backing right there, but half size, so you can kind of just adjust it the proper size of the window. And with this particular review, you get to see me troubleshoot a little bit because our windows we have installed in our house, um, because of the way the actual air hose mounts out or the exhaust hose mounts up um, it actually hits the rim of the uh, windowsill which means it won't close properly it leaves a big old gap and that kind of defeats the purpose of having a nice air conditioning unit in place because then you let a bunch of hot air from the outside in so here you see this thing's just too big so I got to replace that out but it's not difficult to do the sliding mechanism is pretty intuitive so don't panic about that it'll slide right out if you want it to I took the whole thing apart unnecessarily to be honest with you but there you go you can leave those wing nut screws in place and just slide the shorter one right in there and then you'll fit your standard size window there you see my father-in-law sitting sit in the background wondering probably what the heck I'm doing all right, and you see right here, it looks like it fits really good, but the problem is the actual mount for the hose, the attachment for the exhaust hose, um, will hit that little white rim down towards the bottom, which means it sits up and won't properly seal. So I had to go pick up some material to kind of make that not happen again. And since a lot of this is, I think these windows, windows are standard window world windows. So if you ever get like a basic contractor doing your windows these days, this lip is often there because it catches things like wetness and everything else allows for a better seal. But it also means that this particular uh, setup won't work without a slight little uh, hack that I'm going to throw in there. Not really a hack, just using foam. So here is the, how it would look if you just stuck it in there with the actual exhaust hose already attached. You see that big old gap there. So we're going to have to put some kind of spacing mechanism in place. I chose to use foam since it's is easy cheap and I can just replace it as it gets dirty or anything else um, so far after a few weeks of using this the foam you're about to see it has not gotten wet has not gotten moldy so there's not enough uh, moisture coming to it to the window to actually impact it obviously your results are going to vary depending on where you live and how much moisture and wind you might have so this might not work in Florida but it probably works where I live pretty well but just keep that in mind so it's just some projects foam I actually just had this laying around from some other things I was doing about a year or two ago and I just didn't return it because I was like hey you never know when you need project foam and my wife's a crafter so there you go had a good excuse and it's only about, about I think this is like one inch thick project foam. That's all it really took. I just cut a little piece of it off and wedged it down towards the bottom to prevent where that uh, little gap was showing up. Actually, a pretty big gap. And once you do that, it'll basically be more or less flush. And any, any air, any draft that's going to be dealing with is pretty negligible at that point, especially once you get the window actually closed down over it because then it just kind of mushes down into that project foam. It gives you just enough clearance to actually get the... Uh, um, exhaust hose connector off that little lip that I in particular have to deal with although you might have to as well and there you have a much more sealed situation now you do see a slight opening on the right hand side there that is that's going to be inevitable that's the slot where the, uh, the wing nut goes in I just didn't want damaging the paint so I took that out and here's how you attach the hose to the back of your air conditioning unit. Notice that lock mechanism. Make sure it's hit to the unlock position. Otherwise, you might cause some early wear and tear that's not necessary. So right now, the little button on the back there is hit to unlock. You just slide it straight in. It'll click. And then you click the lock button, and it'll hold it in place. So again, when you have to take this thing off, don't try to yank it out of there with that lock button on because you'll end up probably damaging it. 
So from here, it's just a matter of turning the thing on and getting it going. And in just a moment, you're going to hear me uh, cycle through all the fans. So it's, I had to set the, the AC come on. And the, the lowest fans, very quiet. The highest level fan is very, very loud. Keep in mind that the microphone is like right next to this thing. So this is not how it would hear across from the entire room. All right, so now you get to see my amazing and messy, messy office space in my turtle turtle on the left-hand side. This is just a quick test of the temperature. This is the front room of the garage, just to show you how hot the house gets when the AC turned off. It's about 88 degrees outside, so the house does a pretty good job in the middle of the day kind of heat. And we'll run it through. Y'all saw, pretend you didn't see those pew pews in the background. They were out of focus anyway. 85 by the window. And then we're going to go to the bedroom where we actually have the thing set up for my wife because she need, likes to be nice and cool when she lays down. So this is right outside the bedroom, and we're going to see that it's about 78 degrees, really closer to 80. This, this uh, thermometer always registers about a degree or two uh, lower than it really is on these uh, tests that I do. And we'll run over the thermostat itself, and you'll see that the temperature is fairly accurate. Not perfect, but it's pretty close. So then we're going to run through there, and after about 30, 30, 20 to 30 minutes, we've uh, had this thing's been on full blast, set to 70, and uh, notice the temperature there, it's set, it says 70 degrees on the thermostat, integrated into the actual uh, air conditioning unit. It's registering about 74 degrees. That's, again, part, part of this because this is on the second floor. The roof is not insulated, so this is just heat hitting a dark, dark shingle roof, kind of going where it goes. So the upstairs is always going to be hotter in most houses. And you see me kind of walking through just so you know it's not bull crap. The rest of the house is still quite warm. You see the office area, messy, messy, messy. My wife's going to yell at me for videoing this this way. It's still 81 out here, so it's not registering or pulling in the air from the uh, actual bedroom. It's, it's getting pretty toasty out there, and it's a good temperature in, in the room. Um, and again, if you want the best results of this... It, it's going to heat that room, and that room is about 300 square feet, so it's, it's about 100 feet less than what the maximum perfect situation is. And keep this in mind, all those ratings that this thing can cool down a 400 square foot room, that's usually under optimal conditions. That's not on a second floor. That's not going to be on a on in that near, near a bunch of windows. It's usually like, hey, it's dark outside, and the, it's, it's 85 degrees, and this will get you back down to 60, if you, 65 if you leave this thing running for an hour straight. So after about, th about an hour or so of running, the room itself got down to 70. It's just that at this point, my wife and child had come home, and they were breaking my experiment by walking in and out of the room all the time. So it still got down low, um, but I just didn't think it was worth videoing every five minutes and dealing with that but it goes down from about 75 to about 70 in about an hour so you uh you know and that's a chilly temperature in my house for for my purposes but overall happy with the purchase about four hundred dollars it's 379 at sam's i'm not sure it's even available there anymore or if it is i think there's some new version in the south that's like a 10 bucks cheap 10 bucks more expensive or something but good product honeywell makes good stuff really happy with it and again just the portability of it is probably the number one uh benefit because we were thinking about maybe a window mounted unit just so we would have to sit there and have have something taking up space in our in our room but the fact that i can take this into the, into my office area or i can take this into the bedroom based on the needs and it's a really quick setup and it's not terribly heavy although i, I think it's about maybe 40 pounds tops so it's not a terrible burden to move around and so it is very much portable and the and the fact that it is self-exhausting there's no drain unless you're in a hyper humid area is also a big plus so thanks for watching guys hope the video was helpful if you have any questions leave a comment and i'm happy to answer them for you i'm pretty attentive to my comment section and have a great day